Hey guys, my name is Mannequin, and welcome back to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. You guys asked for it, and today we're starting it. We are going to do a series on mixing here. So this is going to be a blast here. We're going to learn all different kinds of things about mixing. And uh, despite the fact that we already talked about the various tools in mixing, I didn't really talk about so much like the application of them and where we really use them. So uh, first off, uh, we're going to start with the kick drum. Uh, you have the kick drum here, and uh, it's routed to bus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a EQ first. Then we're going to add a, where is it, fruity compressor. And then we're going to add a sound goodizer. And then we're going to add a uh, sound goodizer. And then we'll do one more sound goodizer. There we go. Okay, so uh, now that we have all these sound goodizers, uh, we could, like, the idea is uh, you don't, you like, if as long as the sound does not sound good, you just add more sound goodizers and you just set it to the various different modes, have a nice variety there, so you could just make it sound good. And if you haven't realized at this point that this is 100% satirical here, you definitely do not do this. Um, and, but the reason I'm, there's actually a good, very good solid reason as to why I'm doing this right now. Uh, this is an insane exaggeration of what you shouldn't be doing. And that is adding plugins for the sake of adding plugins. Um, and you know, it, I'm sure you've heard this before if you've done production. It's like, you know, just add stuff to add stuff. Uh, you don't just add like plugins because you have them. Um, and that's the idea of mixing, but a lot of people don't really realize how far this extends. So uh, at this point with the kick drum, what should we really do? Uh, well, your first you know, guess might be, okay, uh, we probably should just add an EQ and then maybe a compressor. Uh, so we're going to add an EQ and then a compressor. But I propose to you, this is 100% wrong. And y you might be wondering why this is because like, well, what can you get like other than an EQ and a compressor? Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I could cliche present is say, uh, well, mm, actually what you need to do is you need to focus on volume first before you do EQ and compression. Uh, but that's, that's even more so that's still like useless. Uh, right now, all we have is a kick drum. There is no reason to mix this. If we want a kick drum, and all we have is a kick drum, there's no point in mixing it because we already have a kick drum. It sounds fine. There's nothing to do to it. Um, and like, it, it sounds very stupid and like simple and like very obvious, but it's something that really is not realized as often as I'd hope it was when I'm listening to other people's mixes um, that they send to me. It's really like, you have a good kick drum here. It's a good, like, listen to it. It sounds fine. It sounds like a good kick drum, but then what they'll do is they'll have these other things and they'll just start adding an EQ to it just so that they could EQ it. So they'll have this EQ and, you know, they'll do what they think sounds good. So we're going to go to preset here to set it to default. For why the default is not the default, don't ask me. It's so like maybe they'll boost there and then there. We got to thin those out though so that they're not quite so wide. Um, but like, you know, that's, that's maybe an intuitive thing to do just to make the kick hit a bit harder, which makes sense. But as I said, all we have is a kick. It's already a kick. It sounds good. Why mess with it? Uh, we need to add more things to this. And, you know, even if I add a clap here and a hat here, I uh, actually, I could just do this. This will make it sound interesting. Like, that's almost not enough to go off of. I would actually propose to you that in terms of mixing with this particular thing, all we have to do, you already saw that I uh, messed with the clap volume, which is kind of defeats a little bit of the purpose of what I'm about to say. But um, I would propose to you, we could get this to sound very good only using volume. Like, no EQ, no nothing. second that's the master channel put that back where it was
And there we go. That's our very simple loop and it sounds good. Uh, so really we haven't done anything to this other than volume. Now, first of all, this is one of the reasons I stress volume so much whenever I talk about mixing and why you should always go to volume first before you start to use things like EQ and compression. Uh, but even more than that, it kind of just shows you that depending on what you have, you might not need to do things. I actually just did a remix the other the other day and my kick drum has zero processing on it. That's right, zero processing. And it's one of the kick drums from the free kick drum pack, same pack that this kick drum is from. So it's really not like an expensive kick or anything like that. Um, it's just that the kick sounded good. So why would I do any processing to it? Uh, and that's that's really what we're gonna try to focus on for the most part for this entire series. Uh, we're not gonna add a plugin onto anything unless we have a deliberate purpose for it. Um, now, if a sound doesn't seem to fit, what a lot of people do is they'll be like, okay, so well, at this point, I'll actually add a synthesizer here. Okay, I just keep this in really quick. So now that we have some sort of notes to work with, uh, let me just choose a preset here. Okay, so that's a pretty good option there. Uh, so we have... Uh, we have this, and I'm really just flipping through this really fast. Sorry that I'm kind of cutting around editing things a lot for this video here. Um, but the idea here is we have this sound. I'm sort of like, okay, so obviously uh, it's a little too loud. So we, we're going to turn down the volume. Whoops. And we have this sort of sound, but it's like we kind of find uh, when we turn up the volume and when we turn it down, it either sounds too loud or too quiet. There's not really like a good spot for it. Like if we make it so we can actually hear that all the other stuff fine and we pull it down to that level. Where everything's clear, we run into the problem where this one just kind of sounds like too quiet. So then your inclination might be to add an EQ. Now, there's actually a reason I chose this particular preset and these particular notes. You'll see why. Uh, because, as I said, the inclination might be to grab an EQ and just start... We just start pushing it to try to get it to fit by using EQ. But the problem here is not actually the the EQ. It's the synthesizer we chose. I mean, like right right now, like the the notes kind of sign a, the notes kind of sound plain, and the synthesizer sounds like eh, it's it's an okay synthesizer. Um, but like the the issue here is like our selection of sound right now. Uh, the EQ really like it, the EQ is not going to do anything for it right now. We've we can't save this. It's just a, a bad sound. And I, and I don't mean like the notes are bad. The, in fact, if we go over here, just like, I'm gonna flip through a couple presets really quick. Okay, so we have this one now, and you could tell this one, like it actually, first of all, we can turn up the volume a lot, and we'll listen at the original volume. And it, first of all, it sounds a lot better. It actually fits the notes much, much nicer. It, it sounds like it, it's supposed to kind of go together. And the other thing you notice is now I can actually find a volume level right there where it actually fits. Like, we don't have to EQ this anymore. Now, that said, I probably would end up eventually EQing it uh, because we'd start adding things like pads and bass lines and they start to conflict. And we'd be like, okay, well, maybe for this one, because it's conflicting with my pad, uh, what I want to do is go and first of all, like, hopefully reset the default preset eventually. <laughs> Uh, just do a little bit of boost there to bring up the presence and then set this one so that is a high pass. And just kind of thin it out, get rid of that extra low end that we really don't need and, you know, the pads taking up, for example. That would be how we would actually approach mixing. There's a purpose to doing the, to using this particular tool. We don't just add the tool because we're like, okay, this sound doesn't fit. 
So I need to, you know, EQ it. No, the reason you EQ something is because you're trying to carve out space for that particular instrument inside your mix. You're not supposed to like shape this, the sound of the instrument. Now, the one difference is if you're EQing something in a very strange fashion, like let's say for example, you're gonna, um, you're gonna, uh, this is overtone G EQ, I apologize. We're just gonna go back to parametric EQ, so we're in the familiar tools. Um, let's say we wanted to do a EQ where we just did this. We did something like that, and then we followed that up with a blood overdrive. And you could tell that really changes the tone. So that's like one of the cases where we'd actually be adding a weird EQ to kind of get things to sound super different so that we could shape it and change the tone of it. Because you could tell this, this sound right here would be something you'd use for a lot harder style than something like this. So, uh, like, we can use these tools to completely change the sound, but when it comes to mixing, which is what I'm going to be talking about for the most part, I'm not going to be talking about production in this particular series, um, but the, uh, the purpose of mixing is to get the sounds to fit well together, but not just in like a, they sit on top of each other, around each other, and in each other sort of blended together sense. We're trying to actually do uh, something a bit more than that. And um, unfortunately, I can't spend too much time talking about what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it, the real approach to mixing, because that's going to become a lot more apparent as we get into the more like the more detailed areas. Um, so what I may do is I may actually design a track for this particular series and we'll talk about mixing the various aspects of this. Um, and that's probably the best thing for me to do. But um, but anyway, we're going to have to focus on like an actual mix and how we would break that apart and choose what tools to use. Uh, I'll try to, for the most part, just choose synthesizers, notes, samples, and everything like that outside of the uh, the videos. And then what we'll try to do is we'll add various things to it inside the videos like EQ and compression and re reverb and things like that. So, um, so we're going to be doing a lot in this series. We're going to be learning a lot in this series. But one of the things I want you to remember throughout the whole series here is that mixing is not the cure-all, end-all for your, you know, for your production. Your your production is one particular aspect that's going to be very involved, uh, and it's going to be something that I can't guide you too much on. I can give you production tips, but um, your production style is going to be picked up by listening to a lot of music and by, you know, practicing, finding your own style, and learning production and uh, the like song structure, getting good melodies, matching your melodies with synthesizers and things like that. So that's gonna, that's an entirely separate thing. This is actually just a series on mixing. And um, that will become, as I said, that will become a little bit more apparent as we go on. But for example, go back to where I was, where I like the first synthesizer sound I had um, and then listen to the one right here. And you could really tell between the two that there's just there's just this night and day difference. The the other synthesizer just plain out doesn't fit the notes. So um, so that's one of the things you have to walk into mixing with. You have to walk into mixing with a good production beforehand. Otherwise, your mixing is not going to do crap. Um, and this this is one of the biggest problems that a lot of beginners have is that they see this uh, they see this mixing as a potential way to correct their production issues. So um, so while I'm not saying we're never going to talk about production, uh, we are going to talk about that. Maybe not too much in this particular series, but this series is going to focus more on the aspects of mixing and how we're actually going to mix. So there is a lot to be said, a lot to be done. Um, this is just an introduction, um, but you know we'll really get into it more in the following episodes. Uh, where we talk about you know when you should use EQs, when you should use compressors, how you should use them, when you decide to use them, and all the things like that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we really get into this. <laughs>